a lot of patients have questions about sinus surgery and they want to know are there options available to me other than the traditional sinus surgery which means I'd be out of work for a week or two and potentially have nasal packing in place. Well, the good news is there are lots of other options these days. Most specifically, there's the option of what we call balloon sinus surgery. Why don't we take a look at this video so we can see what that means exactly, okay? And I'll walk you through it so you understand exactly what it is that we're talking about. So if we take a look at this video here, this is an animation of a procedure that's done to treat patients with sinus problems. This one specifically is designed to address the maxillary sinus, which is right behind your cheek. And you'll see that in the animation here. So we start out looking here at the side of the patient's face and we start to get a close up. Now you see a transparent animation of the patient's skull. And now we're gonna look at a cross section of the maxillary sinuses. We're gonna zoom in here and you can see that green fluid inside the maxillary sinus. What you see now is the device that goes in through the natural hole, what we call the natural ostium, into the maxillary sinus, okay? That little light that you see going in there is a guide wire which helps us figure out that we're in the right place. As soon as we're sure that we're in the right place, then we advance this other catheter which has a balloon in it. And now you're going to see the balloon is positioned so that it'll open up the passageway that connects the maxillary sinus to the inside of the nose. You can see there that the bone that is part of that passageway has been broken open and it'll heal in that new position so that it'll help hold that sinus open. And you can see the second part of the procedure is what we call irrigation. So what we're going to do now, after we're sure that the, that the catheter is in the right place, is we wash out all the stuff that's in there, all the mucus and all the other secretions that have been stuck in there. This is a procedure which is often and most commonly done in the office. You can see that now that the passageway is open, it allows for air to come in and for mucus to come out. That decreases the inflammation and the swelling inside the sinus and allows for the nose to be able to work and the sinuses to be able to work in the way in which they were meant to work. As I mentioned previously, this is a procedure which can be done in the office. Most surgeons who perform this procedure do it in the office under just local anesthesia. Every once in a while, we'll run across a patient who maybe needs a little bit of Valium or some other type of relaxant to help them get through the procedure. It's a pretty simple procedure. We numb up the inside of the nose. Most of the time, we don't need to use an injection to do so. It's just a matter of spraying up a local anesthetic inside the nose and then putting a cotton ball up in there in order to make sure you're numb in all the right places. Then using an endoscope, a telescope that goes inside the nose, we could take a look in there and perform the procedure just like you saw it in the animation. Most patients tolerate this really well. If you've ever had dental work done under just local anesthesia, most patients tell me this is pretty comparable. Usually, you can come in and have your procedure done in the morning and go back to work that afternoon. At the very latest, you'd be back at work the next day. Most patients don't have to miss very much if any work or school. They just have to come in the one day for the procedure and then they can go back to most of their routine activities immediately afterwards. And it's a great option for patients who either are unable to take away the time to do traditional science surgery or perhaps who have symptoms which aren't severe enough to warrant traditional sinus surgery but aren't being well controlled with all the other non-surgical options. If this sounds like something that would interest you, I recommend that you find a good board certified otolaryngologist or ear, nose, and throat surgeon who's comfortable doing these procedures. That way you can get a good face-to-face, in-person consultation so that that surgeon can go over what you've done and go over your anatomy, review your CT scans, and figure out whether or not this is a good option for you. Thank you.